Before we go into our questions via email, I just wanted to remind everyone that there will be no Friday webinar next week. Uh, it's Good Friday, of course, April 2nd. But during next week, you can email me your questions, and I'll put content together, of course, uh, and put those into videos so you'll have something to watch next weekend. Plus, I still have about three or four videos I'm working on uh, that we'll start getting into next week as well uh, from other questions and comments from our YouTube channel also. So just keep that in mind. There will be no Friday presentation next week. But send me your questions. We'll put videos together for you. And we already have a slight backlog of videos to do as well. With that being said, let's go ahead and take our questions via email. Mark S. had asked, what is the best setup for a deep in the money debit spread? And we're going to look at a bull call debit spread as well. The structure of a bull call debit spread is we're going to sell an in the money call and we're going to buy a deeper, a lower strike call to cover that short position. This is usually, this is going to be entered, excuse me, at a debit. And the net debit you pay represents the true risk on the position. The maximum profit is equal to the difference in strike prices of the spread, which you hope to get back at expiration, minus the debit that you paid. In this quick example on AMAT, going out about 21 days, about three weeks, we might consider selling the April 112 call at 1673. That would be our short option there on the profit and loss chart. And at the same time, we'd buy an April 110 for 1838. And that's our other leg here as well. This would be a total net debit of $1.65 or $165 for one contract. We'd pay that out of our pocket. We want the stock to stay above 112 in the next 21 days. Anywhere above that, we receive the maximum profit. What would happen at expiration if both calls remain in the money is essentially our broker would buy shares of stock for us at 110 due to the rights of the 110 call that we purchased. And that would cover the obligation to deliver shares of stock at 112. So we would get $2 back, the difference in the strike price, or 200 for one contract, of course. And that makes our max profit 35 cents. And that's 21.2% of the 165 debit that we paid to get into the position. So that's the structure that we look for for an in the money bull call debit spread. But what about the specific criteria? Although I was going to do this for the presentation, my direct answer was there is no one best setup as each investor has their own personal goals and risk preference for a leverage spread. Okay. Um, John, I just saw, uh, I'm sorry here, a couple, John, I just saw your question. I'm actually going to cover that in one second in this discussion as well. Okay. Now, we would say in an in the money bull call debit spread, look for a position that has a good probability above, meaning an 80% probability the stock would stay above that short call strike price. It would equate to about a delta of, say, um, 0 0.8, 0 0.75, somewhere in that range. We use the probability, but we still want a good double digit return around 12 to 15%, maybe 20% or more. Now, the higher the probability means the deeper in the money that you are, and it's going to be a lower return. That's the trade off. You look for a 90% probability, you might only see a 6 or 7% return on the leverage spread. If you go to a 50% probability, you might be looking at a 70 or 80% return, but only a 50 50 shot of getting the max return. We'll talk about that in a moment as well. This is a bullish strategy we're looking at. So you want to look for the same types of securities that you would use for a covered call, a cash secured naked put, a bull put credit spread, and more. And that's going to get to John's question in just a moment. Now, the strike difference of the spread should usually be at least two points. That's what we found with our testing. We did not have a lot of success over time using 50 cent strike differences, one point strike differences, $1.50 really wanted to be two points or more, five point spreads, 10 point spreads, and so forth. But the width, if you wanted to do a 15 point spread or a 20 point spread, that's going to depend on your goals. And the max debit that you want to pay into the position also going to depend on the security that you're using. It might only offer 
higher strike differences, 10 points or so, uh, depending on the underlying price in that case. So if I originally answered Mark and told him that there's no one real answer, where did I get these ideas? And that's from our preferred search in the bull put credit spread on power options, bull put credit spread weeklies, where we're looking two weeks out in time. See, a deep in the money bull call debit spread is a parity to the out of the money bull put credit spread. Have the same risk reward tolerance, similar position. So here's our debit spread here that we just saw, selling the in the money 112 call and buying the 110 for our debit of 165. On the other side, I could sell the out of the money 112 put for about a buck 25 per contract or $125 and buy the 110 at 90 cents. This gives me a net credit up front of 35 cents, but I do have to put up the $2 difference in strike prices, the margin requirement, because I do have an obligation to potentially buy shares of stock at 112, but I've bought the right to sell them at 110 if the stock fell to 108, 104, and so forth. So I'd be out $2 if the stock fell, but we keep that 35 cents regardless of what happens. So my max risk is only 165 to make 35 cents. Whereas in the debit spread, I'm paying 165 out of pocket in the hope that both options stay in the money. We can close the position for the two points and get the 35 back. In past years, we typically said that the bull put credit spreads were a little bit superior to the bull call debit spreads. That's when commissions were fairly high and it was a battle to find the right commissions and investors were worried about paying too many commissions before everything sort of broke, well not broke, it broke in our favor as investors two to three years ago. And you can see the reason why is that if everything works out the way that you want, in a bull put credit spread, I'd pay the commission to get into the two legs. But if both options, I'm sorry, the stock stayed above both strike prices, both options just expire worthless and I don't pay a second commission. In the bull call debit spread, I pay to get into the spread position. I pay a debit and I pay the commissions. But then to exit, I either have to close both options right around expiration for near that $2 or let my broker actively exercise the 110 for me to cover the obligation at 112. So they may charge another commission. They may charge two stock commissions, essentially for buying the stock here and selling it here. Most brokers don't do that, but some still do. So when commissions were a major factor, this is why we tended to go with the bull put credit spread, because you did not have that extra commission. Now, speaking of that, here is extra drawings that shouldn't be there. <laughs> Here is our bull put credit spread criteria that we use on power options, the one that we prefer uh, for using the bull put credit spread. It's a mix of stock criteria and option criteria that we've I've traded, we've tested to get the best results over several different years of testing cycle from about 2015 uh, through now, as a matter of fact. We look for the two week out positions. We want a minimum net credit of greater than 20 cents at least a 10% return, but our target is usually around 15, 15.5%. That's about the average. 3% uh, out of the money, but looking for that probability of 85% or more. Some restrictions on the bid ask spread, it's really not that important. And again, we want that strike difference to be greater than $2. Same testing period, same type of stock and option criteria. We did not see as much success forcing it, even with the 85% probability, to be 50 cent spreads or dollar point spreads. We found the two point spreads or greater seem to work best long term. Yep, we're going to look for stocks in an uptrend. We're going to look for a specific MACD as well in that case. And you always want to avoid earnings between now and expiration in any type of spread position such as this, a shorter term spread position, uh, because why take the extra chance when it does have a good probability there? that it could come back and uh, hurt you from an unexpected event. And that's the criteria, John, to you. But this is the same criteria that I may use for an in-the-money bull call debit spread for Mark. It's just on power options, we would change some of the basic concepts. Instead of looking for a minimum 
net credit, I might look for a maximum net debit. But if I'm going two to three weeks out, I still want that range out of the money. I still want that same probability. I still want that minimum return. And I'm going to use the same stock criteria that I would use in either screen. Uh, so John, that answers your question there related to the bull put spread. That's what we prefer to use on power options. That's why that default search is there. And I might construct a similar position, similar criteria with a bull call debit spread as well. Now, we always want to evaluate the parity. I had mentioned, of course, that I prefer to use the bull put credit spreads, out of the money bull put credit spreads with the high probability in this case. There's a tool on power options in the spread chain tool, which you can access through the signature tools or under any of the vertical spreads. And this allows you to view the put credit and call debit parity, or if you want to go bearish, bear call credit to the bear put debit parity as well. But just put in some basic factors, one stock at a time, or you can link to it from the search. You'll be able to link to the spread chain tool from the search, but you can set your spread width, minimum net credit, range out of the money, minimum return, and the probability. And going 14 days out for AMAT, we see here, okay, here's a one spread with an 80% probability. It's the 119, 117. And in this case, what we're going to look to do here would be selling again the 119, buying the 117 with a stock at 128. And on the call side, be a debit of 165 for a return of 21.2%. But if I see a disparity where I can get more for the out of the money bull put credit spread at the same strikes and the same probability, I will go with the higher return. And it's not always the case. And sometimes here, if we went deeper in the money to the 90% probability. If we get midpoint at the calls here, debit of 165, 21.2% return. This is the 114, 112. But midpoint on the put spread is only 30 cents with a 90% probability or 17.6%, still pretty good. But more bang for the buck, I might be tempted to try to get the midpoint at bull call debit spread. So you have that same probability, but the higher potential return. But again, that's where you run into the problems. The in the money calls will have a wider bid ask spread. It's not as easy of a guarantee that you're going to be able to get the midpoint prices. But you always want to use that spread chain tool in this case. Check the parity before you enter the trade as well. Never hurts. You can always maybe find something a little more bang for the buck, still having the same risk reward profile as well. Now, Another approach that's used in bull call debits, which seems to be fairly popular, is looking at the at or slightly out of the money bull call debit spread. With AMAT at 128, I may use a bull call debit spread where I'm buying the out of the money, I'm sorry, I'm selling the out of the money 130 call for $5. And I'm buying a 125 for 740. This gives me a debit of $2.40, higher than what we saw with that two-point spread because it's a five-point spread. But if the stock is trading above 130 at expiration, we get the five points back off a debit of 240. So this means our profit would be 260 on an investment of 240 or a little bit over 100% on the investment. This gives us a better risk reward ratio. We're looking at a one to one or two to one risk reward ratio with the at or out of the money bull call debit spread. We give up the probability. There's only about a 45, 46% probability that AMAT would be above 130 in the next 21 days, as opposed to about 80% with the spread we were looking at before. With this structure, you typically want to go further out of time. Instead of just going two weeks out or three weeks out, unless you're really bullish on the stock, investors tend to look for more time. We go 40 days out, 60 days out to allow more time for the stock to move, to go above that strike price. And in general, uh, those of us who discuss it here, uh, this approach on the webinars before, ask about these or trade the at the money or out of the money bull call debit spreads, what they typically do is when you get 50% of your max expected profit, liquidate the position early. So if I can get liquidate these two legs, do the opposite, liquidate those legs and get 
130 back, meaning I've made 50% on my position or 50% of what I expect it to make. We might take it off the table early, close the position, and then look for another one as well. But with any spread, you also want to limit it to a 50% loss. You don't want to allow the stock to fall too far to where your liquidation value on this long call drops below uh, you know, $1.20 or $1.30. You don't want to take more than a 50% loss in that position. You want to try to never take a 100% loss in any debit or credit spread. It just takes a much time to get back to break even in that case as well. So that is an approach for the out of the money spread for bull calls. You might do it with bear puts as well. Would I ever do this structure with a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio and a lower probability with the bull puts? And the answer is no, I wouldn't. Why? With this out of the money structure that gives you that better one-to-one -one risk reward ratio, it's called the out of the money or at the money structure because the call that you're selling is out of the money. Okay, you don't have to fulfill any obligation. If I sold the 130 put and bought the 125, this put would now be in the money when I start the position. And that means I'm risking being assigned at any time. And so I don't probably want to be assigned in this case. If this is the structure I wanted, closer to the one to one risk reward ratio, and has, of course, the lower probability, as we mentioned, I'm only doing this with the calls as a bull call debit at or out of the money. Would never do this with a bull put because you're starting with a short put in the money. You could be assigned at any time, meaning I'd have to buy the stock. And if it's not trading below the put strike price I bought at 125, I'm on now in a married put position, which is okay, but not the structure I want. And that wasn't the goals for this trade. So this at the money, out of the money structure is only used with bull call debits, or if you're bearish, a bear put debit. You wouldn't use the parity credit spread starting off with a short option that's in the money. You get a better risk reward ratio, one to one, instead of the five to one or six to one you see with high probability spreads, but you're giving up the probability. This is more, as you can tell, of a bullish move. Your expectation is more bullish in sentiment for this structure. Whereas with, of course, the in the money bull call debit or out of the money bull put credit. The stock can stay the same, move up or even drop before you're having to worry about adjusting the position uh, or losing on the trade as well. Now, all that being said, uh, that was for Mark there, but Ray S. did send in another question similar to this. Uh, Ray asked, what does Facebook stock have to do to make money or what does it have to do to lose money. The current price is 28204. It changed to 28302 when I put the slide together. And he said that he was selling the April 9th 287 and a half put for 1443 and buying the 290 put at 1281. This is a bear put debit, reverse of what we just talked about for the bull call debit. In this case, I want the stock to stay below 287.50 meaning both puts are in the money. As before with the call debit spread, we'd, in our example, we'd want both calls to stay in the money, the stock to be above it. Here, we want the stock to be below it to get the maximum profit. What does this short put do for me? Well, it obligates me to potentially buy shares of stock at 287.50, but I've bought the right to force someone to buy it at 290. Expiration of April 9th, 4.20 in the afternoon, the stock remains below 287.50. Essentially, my broker, I'm forced to buy shares of stock at 287.50. My broker exercises my long put, forcing someone to buy it. We get the 250 back. Now, Ray sent me these prices. And if this is an actual position, it means that he legged into it at different times. That he either was able to buy this at a lower price and the stock price moved and he was able to sell this at a higher price to do this at a credit. This is a bear put debit structure, but he's showing it as receiving a credit. So it's essentially what we call a bulletproof debit spread. He has no risk. Since he received a credit, if the stock goes the wrong way, goes above 290 and both puts expire worthless, he still keeps the 162 net credit. In real market prices, this afternoon when I looked at it, of course, 
that's not possible. It's going to be the debit that we saw earlier for Mark's question related to in the money debit spreads. The 290 would cost me 1150 to buy the 290 put and I'd sell the 28750 put for 948. So now we've got a debit of $2 and 2 cents roughly on a $2.50 spread. Same principle though, the stock stays below 28750. Both of my puts are in the money. At expiration or after the close, I'm obligated to buy shares of stock at 28750, but I have the right to force someone to buy them from me at 290. We get the 250 back, we make 48 cents on an investment of $2.02 or 23.8% return, with a reasonable probability that the stock would be below 287.50 at expiration. That's a bear put debit spread. And that's the position that you're in, Ray. Again, you showed me one that received at a credit, must mean you'd be legged in because anytime you do a debit spread at the same time, uh, you know, it's, there's no free money. The market's going to be done at a debit in this case or in the bull call debit as well. Okay, so a uh, follow-up from John. Let, that's what we had for our, our topics there um, related to Mark S. about the in-the-money bull call debit spreads <clears throat> compared to the parity bull put credit spreads. And our little discussion here from Ray on the Facebook position he's looking at, which is a bear put debit spread, but with his numbers, uh, he said he received at a credit. So it becomes sort of a no-risk debit spread, but the max profit is still only achieved if your stock is trading below, in this case, the short put strike price. Similar profit and loss chart to a bear call credit spread. Now, let's navigate over to Power Options. We're gonna take some of our live questions that came in. And John says, so with the selection criteria of the bull puts, do I need to look at the chart for the stock to make sure the trend is up or the criteria takes care of that? Well, the criteria does take care of that. Here we are in bull puts. Here's that default weekly bull put screen that I mentioned. Only four results uh, came in now. I'd usually run the search on Monday in the afternoon. And John, as you mentioned, we are looking for stocks in an uptrend. And we're looking for a positive MACD, avoiding earnings between now and expiration with the probability that we want. So Monday afternoon, when I'm in my cycle to open new bull put credit spreads that are 11 days out, two weeks out in time, I run the search. I see my potential returns and my potential position. So the top three or four, as I mentioned, that's going to target easily that 15% I mentioned. Yes, there's some lower ones here. And we allow the lower ones to come in a, a return of greater than 9% just in case there's a trade here in the top that I don't want to enter. The answer to your questions, John, is yes. That's the first thing I do. I'm going to go to Adobe. Oh, I don't think I have big charts set up right, but let's go to big charts here. And I'm only on a one month. I usually want to be on a three month chart there. And so we've set it up looking for how Ernie and I prefer to do it to look at the Bollinger Bands, MACD, RSI, and so forth. I have the positive MACD that I want in this case. That's there. Now I'm above the 20 day moving average, but I'm also looking at what, John? I'm trying to look here and say something bad happened here. And, but yes, it's starting to recover. It moved back above the 20-day moving average. That is a positive MACD and looks like it's going up now. Had a good jump today. But if I'm concerned that this could duplicate itself, if a recovery isn't going to be strong enough, John, I might just move to the next position. I might forget about Adobe in this case and move on to the next position. But if I feel strong enough because it does have the trends that I want, it does have the trends that I'm looking for, but back in the past a little bit, which a lot of stocks felt this in the last week or so, then I'd have to ask myself, is this worth it? Or do I want to maybe find something different? So then, of course, oh, let me do this real quick. I apologize. Uh, there we go. Store the chart settings there. So I'm looking at the three months, so I don't have to do that again. So for whatever reason, John, I decide I don't like that one from recent transactions. I'll just move to the next one. I'll take a look at Home Depot. Yeah. So this is probably more of a chart for 11-day trade that I like. And you can say, oh, well, it's topping out. It's bound to fall. But keep in mind, we're not selling right at the money. We're doing a spread that's down here. Okay, so the stock would have to revert all the way back down. So take a look at where your strikes are. 
But this course, yeah, I could say this would be the best time to do a bull put spread. You know, right when there was that MACD crossover and it broke above the 20 day moving average, similar to a structure that we just kind of saw um, with Adobe. But again, this is kind of what I'm looking for. And that's the kind of chart that we want. Is it going to hold? No. But am I giving myself enough room to potentially, even if it reverts back to its average, it goes back to 275? Uh, in this case, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. If I felt it could fall back 275, maybe I'd do different strikes, but this is the one that matches my return. So, John, to answer your question, you always want to check the stock chart to make sure it matches your risk tolerance for a position, sentiment for the structure, and more. Okay. All right. Now, um, all of the default searches in power options, whether you're doing a covered call, naked put search, um, bear call credit, for example, married put, the default criteria are all likely, and I think almost all of them are, are using a trend that matches the sentiment. We're looking for stocks that are in an uptrend or a downtrend. Um, so the, the picks of the day, of course, we're looking for stocks above 50 day moving average and a MACD as well. Sorry about that. The basic other defaults, let's just go with the at the money here for covered calls. Of course, you can change any of these criteria, but again, Stock price above the SMA 50 with good fundamentals, earnings per share growth greater than seven, relative PE, and more. But you still want to check the stock chart always to make sure that it matches your safety levels, your goals for the position, and what you're looking to achieve with the sentiment of the trade that you're in.